Hi all, it's me, Amanda, Teen Services Librarian here at Herrick District Library, back again with another okayish art with Amanda. What's okayish art with Amanda? Well, it's where I scour the internet looking for arts and crafts projects, attempt to do them, emphasis on attempt, and then grade them on a scale of one to five Amandas. One Amanda being I needed extra help doing this, and five Amandas being that it's Amanda proof. That means if I can do it, so can you. For today's video, I scoured the internet looking for different arts and crafts projects, and it came across this one. So Basalt Regional Library in Colorado has done a take and make with Animal Crossing and paper mache. And I took one look at it and went, I think I can do that. Okay, so I'm back. It's the second day. I have paper mache my balloon and let it dry for 24 hours. And this is what it looks like. So, as you can see, it's come to a point at the end down here. Um, and I think it's because I put too much paper mache on or the fact that I did it in one foul swoop instead of letting the layers dry in between. So I asked my coworkers, what can I do about this? And they suggested taking, popping the balloon out and just trying to patch it up essentially. So we're going to try that because also the bottom has opened. So this is like open balloon right here and this is open balloon right here. So I'm gonna take it off the string. It's glued on. So I'm gonna cut it and we're gonna pop the balloon. Oh, please let this work. I'm so nervous. Very small pull. Okay, I did a very small one. It's definitely, it's definitely all dry. So there's that at least. All right, so you can kind of see it's concaving, it's concaving in a little bit here. Amanda, what did you do? It's completely open. I just have to figure out what I'm gonna do about the top. That at least. This is the top of the head. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, so after conversing with my coworkers, <laughs> so what was decided is that we're just gonna push, like push the inside of the top down. And I think it's gonna be okay anyway because like this is where the hair is going to go. I think it's okay. Plus I'm gonna paint it. We're gonna make it work. We're, we're gonna make it work. 
Um, the next thing I need to do is, so this is where the hole was for the balloon, but I need to um, make the hole bigger so my head can fit in it. <laughs> I'm gonna get something I can trace with it um, and then so I can cut, so I can make sure that my cut is even because I know me and I won't make an even cut. Alright, I'll be back. Okay, so I got a paper plate because I think this should be big enough to fit. Right? Right? Alright, so I'm gonna put it on the top and I'm just gonna do a loop. It is fairly easy to cut through, so at least there's that. There we have it! Let's see if it works! <laughs> yep, it works! So let's get some paint and uh, paint this thing. So I'm gonna make it a very light peach color. So I'm gonna use a lot of white and I'm gonna add a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow and hopefully we can get kind of a peachy color. We'll see. I am using acrylic paint. Uh, acrylic paint will stain your clothes if you get it on your clothing. Always start off with a little bit because you can always add more. My one and only tip. <laughs> Pretty light. So I think we're gonna go with this color. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Okay, so I painted it with one layer of paint. I am going to let it dry for a couple of hours and then I'm gonna paint it again. Um, I'm noticing that it's cracking, like the paint is cracking in spots um, up in here. And I'm not sure if it's my paint, if it's my application, if it's my terrible brush, um, or if that's just what's gonna do and that's why I need two layers. I don't know. So we're gonna find out and we'll see. So crossing my fingers that this will still be okay. Okay, back in a few hours. So it's day three of this project um, and I'm going to start over. So I've realized I've made some mistakes. Uh, this guy here <laughs> did not turn out as I thought it was going to. So I'm going to try some new things. Um, one, I think that the problem was is I put all of the paper on at once. And so instead, I'm gonna do it in layers. So I'm gonna do one layer of newspaper, let it dry, one layer, one layer of newspaper, let it dry, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I also put on white uh, copy paper on the outside of it, thinking that that would be good because it would make it easier to paint. However, I think it's what's making the whole thing collapse. So it's like collapsing in on itself. It's super wrinkly. Um, and the paint, like, the paint, like, is cracking. And it's acrylic. And it shouldn't do that. So I, I have a feeling that it has to do with how I made the whole thing. So I have learned from this. And I'm moving forward. And we're going to try again which means I have to blow up another balloon, but that's okay because I've learned and we're gonna try something new. So, here we go. Hopefully it works this time. Okay, layer one.
Hi all. So I'm back for round two and I noticed something. So I went and looked at my balloon, which is dry on the top and it's not dry on the bottom, which I'm not like overly surprised about because gravity, you know, that kind of thing. But I'm noticing it is looking kind of pointed at the top and I can see that it's splitting. See this giant crack right in the paper? So I think the pull of gravity is doing its thing again. So instead this time, this time instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to prop up the balloon this way in and I'm going to use my old balloon, my old paper mache guy <laughs> to kind of hold it up, patch up the top, let it dry and then come back to it again tomorrow. We're gonna try that. All right, crossing fingers. Here we go. Hi, friends. We're back again with round two of the paper mache Animal Crossing head. So, so far, what I have done is I have fixed the top. I have glued on another layer, and we're currently getting this guy propped up, as opposed to hanging from this string that you can see here. So if at first you don't succeed, we're just going to try, try again. It's looking way better this round. I'm a lot more excited about it. Uh, I have a lot more high hopes, I hope, yay. Uh, it's a little wrinkly. It's mostly wrinkly at the top, so I think we're okay. Um, I'm going to do one more layer of newspaper. So what I've been doing is putting a layer on the top and then flipping it and then putting a layer on the now top or bottom or and then I'm letting it dry for X amount of time in between a couple of hours here or there and we'll go from there. After everything is dry, I'm going to cut it and we're going to paint and I'll see you at that stage of the game. Alrighty, at this stage of the project, I've done three layers of newspaper. Uh, I did a layer and then I let it dry. I did a layer and then I let it dry and then a layer and then I let it dry. Da, 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 da. It took a long time, yes. However, it's much more successful. It's not as wrinkly this time around. It's still a little wrinkly, but I think this is gonna work way better. So, now it's time to pop the balloon and make a giant circle that I will cut out and paint. Simple as that. And just like before, I'm gonna take a paper plate, put it over the top to use to trace for my opening So, ta-da, there it is. The, the balloon is already starting to kind of peel, it's starting to peel away, the balloon is starting to peel away from the paper mache, which that's okay. Um, <laughs> can you hear it? There it goes. If I hold it up to the light, I can see some of the spots where I've missed where I should have spots where I should have um, added more layers, but we're here. It actually looks pretty good. I'm really excited. So I'm going to get to painting. We're going to use our acrylic paint again. I'm using white and adding a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow to kind of make a peachy pale color to match my peachy pale skin tone. Let's get painting. Okay, so that's layer one done. I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna paint another layer on after that because it's definitely 
pretty see-through at this point. Uh, the instructions did say like if you were gonna use a lighter color to probably paint it white first and then add on this color. And I had forgotten about that, I'll be honest. I forgot. So I'm just gonna do two layers of this color and hope it works. Hi all, I am back. I have done three-ish layers of paint, mostly because I left a lot of bare spots. Um, as you can see, it's pretty wrinkly, but overall, I think it's not so bad. One interesting thing I found was that on the inside, as you can see right there, the balloon has peeled away from the inside layer. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's in there. At least this way it won't smell completely of latex. So our next step is to put the face on. The site provided these two handy sheets, one for eyes and one for mouths and eyes and um, yeah, a nose, a nose there too. For the eyes, I'm planning on using these down here. For the mouth, I'm planning on using this one. And for the nose, I think I'll go with maybe this one. We'll see once I get everything cut out and where placement will be on the head. We're gonna paper mache on our eyes. Uh, you can color them ahead of time with a Sharpie marker and then let it dry and then carefully glue them on. I have to find a non-wrinkly spot to glue them on with. I'm going to put the nose on first. It's the center of the face. The nose is the center of your face. So the nose should go in first because then I can tell where the eyes and the mouth should go. Listen to me sounding like I know what I'm talking about. The nose is on. Let's do the mouth next. Okay, now we're gonna put the eyes on. Ta-da! OMG, that's really creepy. It's really creepy. Next up for our friend is some hair. I have chosen this color because it's the one that we have the most of currently. I really wanted to do blue or pink, but we didn't have as much of that. So I'm gonna go with this one and hopefully I have enough. Uh, I'm gonna cut everything into strips and then use tacky glue to glue it on because tacky glue is my best friend. It's staring into my soul. I think the veins are done. Now on to the rest of the hair. There she is. Complete. I might add a little bit more hair, we'll see. I bet you're all wondering, how many Amandas does this project get? I went through a lot of up and downs with this one. However, I have to say, I had a really good time making it and also really love the final product. Is it perfect? No, but <laughs> does it make me laugh? Yes, a lot. So I'm gonna give this project three and a half stars. Mostly because I had to troubleshoot a lot and that's okay. I learned a lot from it. Definitely, if you wanna start making paper mache, try out some different ways of doing it and you're gonna have a really fun time making this. Thanks for watching Okayish Art with Amanda and I'll see you next time. interviewed so to speak by me um about your animal crossing uh amazing 
take and make that I found on the interwebs. <laughs> you want to do a quick intro of yourself really quick? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Kristen Doyle. I'm the Teen Services Coordinator for the Basalt Regional Library. Um, Basalt is in on the western slope of Colorado. We're about halfway between Glenwood Springs and Aspen. I think two towns nearby. Um, but yeah, so uh, we have this really fun Wednesday program where each week um, we have an activity um, that can be picked up by kids and teens and it can either be scaled up, so something that's a little bit more complicated like this, or scaled down for younger kids. So we had a paper plate version of our Animal Crossing map that was a little bit simpler too. Um, Should have made that one as well. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to go along with the big one. <laughs> well, I actually, I had it right here. Let me grab it. Just oh, see. yeah. Ah! <laughs> it's great. It's a version for younger kids, too. That's super great. I love that you made, like, I love that you made, like, a little kid version with it. So, are you, you're a big Animal Crossing player already, then? Yes. So, I had not played any version other than when New Horizons came out on the Switch. Okay. And, like, many of um, really, almost everybody across the country, we're in lockdown, and uh, I logged a lot of hours really fast. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite villager? Yes. Murphy. Oh my Murphy. god. Murphy Which is a little green cub, so he's one of those smaller bears. And he's a grumpy, so he's got a really low voice. And um, he's really sweet, but occasionally he'll just say things like, I don't know where I go shopping to cover my flesh prison. Like this <laughs> really hilarious, grumpy, like existential dread. Um, so Murphy's my favorite Animal Crossing character. That's so great. Yours. Mine. Oh man. Um. I really like Eugene. He's mm -hmm. a koala bear with uh, these really like. He kind of reminds me of Elvis. Um, he's got uh, sunglasses and like a biker jacket and he's always like happy with whatever um, you give him uh, and he has funny like I give them a lot of fossils so I can get their photo and uh, whenever I give him a fossil he says something about Blather's collection and he's like I collect things too but shoes and I think that's funny. <laughs> um, so how did you come up with doing uh, a paper mache animal crossing head yeah so um halloween's my favorite holiday i am big into costumes and i'm big into making costumes from scratch or especially if i can from recycled material and so um i decided that i wanted to be my animal character crossing for halloween and we decided to make it into a take and make um and yeah so my first thought when deciding to make the project and why we went with this kind of like big bobblehead is to really make you look like an Animal Crossing character. The size of the head just needs to be huge compared to the size of the body. So, you know, Animal Crossing characters, if you look at their height, their head takes up like at least a quarter, if not a third of their height. And so based on that, I figured out I would need a pretty big balloon um, sphere to start it off with and went from there. Um, so typically paper mache, um, if you decide to go the Elmer's, uh, Elmer's or Mod Podge route instead of using wheat paste, um, typically I do a two to one ratio or I even have had success with glue doing a one to one ratio. Um, I think as long as it's that tacky glue somewhere between one to one to two to one being glue heavy, um, that usually works pretty well for me with paper mache. Um, however, one thing I thought about that I didn't think about when making this tutorial is that in Colorado, we have a much, much drier climate. And so things dry here incredibly quickly. I actually grew up in Michigan. And I remember when I first moved to Colorado and I would get out of the shower and it didn't take 24 hours for my hair to dry. Um, it took like a half hour. Um, so that might've been one reason that you didn't get the same like level of rigidity used um, one of those kind of like knock them sock them balloons that have the the string oh, okay um, yeah it was hard to blow up I definitely I'm not gonna lie I um, did like the first half and then handed it off to my partner finish working <laughs> um, 
Usually once you pop your balloon, it does start to pull away and sometimes it'll stick to the ends. Other times it'll snap and pop off immediately. Um, but I think allowing the layers to dry fully in between adding probably helped you a bunch. Another thing that can help with paper mache is that if you have your strip of paper totally 100% saturated in that gunk and you don't kind of like squeeze the excess off, sometimes when you add that on top and top and top, it can, I think that might have been what caused some of that to come sliding down with gravity. Whereas I think that kind of what I do sometimes um, librarian, this is the damaged book. <laughs> but sometimes even like once I had dunked it in glue, I would even kind of like take two fingers and kind of squeegee it a little bit. Um, and I think that just keeps the whole thing a little bit lighter. Um, another thing is with paper mache, if you're going for smooth, um, thinner the paper. So that's why newspaper and newsprint works really well. Tissue paper works too, you can get super thin. Um, also, if you tear your edges, it'll actually create a smoother surface as well. Um, and then one other way you can add rigidity to any paper mache product before you kind of go in and hold your breath and pop the balloon is once your final layer is totally dry, you can coat it with a full strength layer of Elmer's glue or um, Mod Podge, and sometimes that can help make it more rigid. Um, or what I did for mine was actually before I popped the balloon, and it was really because I forgot and not so much because uh, <laughs> it was intentional, was I actually did my a white layer of gesso to hide the news paint. So that's just like a thick, inexpensive acrylic white paint. Um, and so when that hardened, I think it added a little bit of a level of structure as well. Um, another thing that um, can help that I didn't do with this one, but I've done with other paper mache products is it's kind of if you, once you've made the, your cuts and you find it's not quite as rigid as it was before, you could add an extra layer of paper mache right around your cut edge and like have it actually fold over. And sometimes that can just keep, I mean, this is still relatively flexible, but it's, it's flexible in a way where I'm not gonna break it. Um, so that's another option. Oh wow, um, yeah, so actually, kind of funny, I actually went to school for fish and wildlife biology, and um, I did that for five years, and really loved it, and kind of made the move to environmental education. Um, and wasn't really thinking about working in the library, but the position came open, um, and it felt right the move, like the right move, and I got really lucky. I had a lot of experience doing programming with kids, um, and used the library a lot and as a very avid reader. So even though I don't have a formal education in library science, um, it's worked out really well. And um, I think that's probably why I was most excited to make the switch to working at the library versus environmental education is because at the library with teens and kids, I can still do environmental education programs. We can still go look in the snow for different animal tracks. And we can look in the park and see what wildlife poop there might be and trying to identify it. In Colorado, we actually do get bears that hang out by the library. <laughs> Um, and so, but I also get to do all these like really fun arts and crafts programs as well. So yeah, um, in my own free time, most of my artwork is kind of a combination of wood burning and colored pencil, a little bit of oil painting. Um, but here at the library, um, we have done a wood burning demo and we're thinking about doing another bigger class later. Um, we're going to do some fun like kind of programs that tie into Creative Bug, which is a craft tutorial so this year. Um, and I think honestly, we have creative book here too. <laughs> yeah, I think the best thing about my job really is that like if I'm passionate about it or a kid is passionate about something, like we can find a way to turn it into a really cool fun program. Like we have a senior at our local high school who's going to teach a ukulele class for beginners. So, uh, I'm really looking forward to that. That's really cool. I love that. Um, I would say my biggest, biggest, biggest piece of advice for anyone of any age who is learning or trying to learn how to do different art, making their own costume, whatever kind of art it is, is do not be afraid to fail and view your failure as a, you know, when something doesn't work out, like your first attempt at your Animal Crossing head. Um, Use it as a learning tool of like, okay, well, how do I plan this better next time? Like you're like, okay, so I'm gonna think about it. Maybe I'll let my layers dry a little bit more in between. Um, 
And then the other thing I think that sometimes gets lost, especially on kids with art, is I think we think of art and being talented at art or being technically good at drawing or what have you. We think of it as being an innate ability, like you're innately creative. Um, and that is not true of any artist I know, not one. Um, being good at art takes a lot of practice and a lot of work. So if you drew something and you didn't like how it looked, it doesn't mean you're a bad artist. It means you gotta draw more. Um, and so uh, just that stick with itness and um, your ability to take a failure and turn it into a stepping step or a learning experience um, into your next project, I think is really key. So we have a couple of fun, um, our grab and go kits for um, November. There are a couple I'm really excited about. Um, one is we are going to make these really cool um, paper lanterns. And so we should have kind of like a variety of semi-translucent thin paper that can be drawn or painted on. We'll include um, some different popsicle sticks so that you can create either a square kind of traditional lantern um, or a cylindrical one. Um, and then the other one I'm looking forward to is we're actually participating in a program called um, the Paper Crane Project, which is pretty awesome, and that, um, or the Peace Crane Project, where we are partnering with a group of students in Virginia. We're gonna be making really beautiful origami cranes and decorating them with messages of peace and hope and kind of how we can bring our communities together. And then we're gonna ship our origami cranes to these students in Virginia and they're gonna send us theirs. And so I'm really excited to have a craft or opportunity to connect with other students and maybe in the future we can have our libraries connect on a craft. So thank you so, so much. And for, for, yeah, for, for, well, one, thank you for creating this project because um, it's amazing and I love it. And even though it was hard, I learned a lot from it. So, <laughs> um, and I love that I could do it from home, like that you put the instructions up. So like I could do it here. I just had to get the materials. I didn't necessarily have to come do yeah, it. Yeah, and we plan on doing the same with all of our grab and go activities. Um, we make as many kits as is reasonable, but we, they're usually all taken, so we include that list and in instructions so anybody who didn't get to the library in time to grab a kit um, can still do it from home. So 